This episode is brought to you by Gold Water. Peace Family is 19 Keys. I'm back with another high level conversation. Today, I brought some of the cultural pioneers, the diaspora kings, the lions in the jungle. You understand me? They're here to free you and your family. They've been taking this uh, financial liberation everywhere. I'm talking about, you know, to the White House, you know, <laughs> <laughs> to the entertaining stages with the rappers. And what's been happening is, is that we've been starting to see an export of financial intelligence. And I believe that they are in the business of import and export. You understand me? To where it's not just, you know, hip hop, right? It's not just entertainment, but it's education. And education is the foundation that we start to build our own nation out of. You understand me? Once you get education, then you have the instructions in order to build wealth. Once you have wealth, you now have the ability and the resources to control your environment. And that's power. So who I'm here with today is none other than assets over liabilities, which is a statement itself that if a person lives by that mantra, then they have the keys and the guide towards going to wealth. So we have none other than two brothers who started together. You understand me right here with iPhones and microphones. You understand me? <laughs> and they took that to the highest stages with high level conversations. None other than Troy Millens and Rashad Bilal. 19 keys and this is high-level conversation. Tap in with the guys. Hip-hop. Hip-hop is our greatest export. It's a trillion-dollar export. Yeah. You understand yeah. me? The money that's made off of hip-hop, the clothing, the media, the music, the movies. All, I mean, it's so much context that goes around. The clubs are filled of it. Liquor are sold from it. So much. So when I went out to Africa and they say, what up, my nigga? And I felt a certain way. But it's like, that's what we exported to them. Mm -hmm. And they just feeding that back because that's what they believe is cool. You understand me? That's yeah. the language we gave them. So we export hip hop and hip hop teaches, you know, drill music, hunting black men, killing people, listening to music, fast death. You know what I mean? The uh, sexualization, you know? And then of course we got the uh, uh, positive hip hop as well. You understand me? That people listen to and, and, and rap music, but we know that it's overwhelming the ignorance that is more catchy. So when we went to London and, you know, the people running up to us and talking about assets and talking about wealth and real estate and crypto, NFTs and blockchain, that's an export of financial intelligence. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's the export of wealth. That is a positive export that we are a part of. You understand me? And I really want us to, you know, just take time to, for number one, appreciate that platform that we have. And, and the type of thought leadership that we do push because everybody doesn't go out the country and they have a positive export that's reflected in what they do with their platform. You understand me? And I think that's probably the most beautiful thing about this moment. It's like, nah, they wasn't walking up to me on nothing ignorant. 5,000 people standing in the cold mm -hmm. because they want to get to some wealth and some power. And they traveling, I'm talking about catching planes from different countries because events like this have not happened. So they didn't want to miss out on this cultural movement to set their family up for the next generation. Yeah, it's interesting because like when you talk about it, while we were there in London, it was yeah. like we've had artists and we've had celebrities come to this place, but nobody's packed it like y'all did. Yeah, you know what I mean. And it becomes like you become the vessel for that. Yeah, and so we don't take that lightly. That was always been the mission. It was like I said, like we're gonna become financial missionaries. Mm. But we're spreading the, the yeah. We're gonna spread the word, not just from an American standpoint, but Church from, of wealth. <laughs> <laughs> from a global standpoint, because yeah. the issues that are happening in America, yeah, we can relate to that. But the person in London. It's a totally set of different issues, but there's similarities. Yeah. And so rather than trying to force our ideas and force our thoughts on it, let's hear what they got to say, mm -hmm. and let's get some native people to talk about those issues and see how we can come together to actually conquer and alleviate some of those issues. So that's ill. That's an ill comparison that you use. Yeah, I mean, when we know, like, we, we, we you know, that 2053, I always look at that just because I think it gives us a tangible goal to fight against. You understand me? Like, we need an enemy in order to fight. Right. If we don't have an enemy, we get rocked to sleep and we don't even realize we in the war. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm I, you know, when I first heard it, I'm like, damn, they always trying to put in our imagining poverty. You understand me? But at the same time, it's like if we don't even realize there's an invisible enemy, there's a pending threat. Then we go about our daily lives being entertained when we supposed to be training. You understand me? And so this 2053 looming is and, and they say black people won't have no assets in 2053 or not enough that accumulate any power wealth in this country because everybody else is going to outpace us so fast. 
right? Mm -hmm. And then they say, you know, our brown neighbors, our Mexican brothers, by 2073, they gonna have 0% wealth. So that's the other end of that statistic. So, you know, we all in this together at the end of the day. Right. Um, it's not just us, it's just that we're gonna reach the bottom faster. You understand me? And so what we doing is an uphill battle because not only are we fighting to get and gain the attention of our people, we're fighting against the backdrop of entertainment who wants that same slot of attention, that same time slot where they listening to Market Mondays, there's some entertainment they say, no, watch my show instead. You know, I dropped some posts on uh, content on IG, I'm twerking, let's watch this instead. But it's like, that's why, you know, it's hard to make things, you know, entertaining and educational because it, 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 to the point where it's like, it makes a real effective movement. You know what I'm saying? Cause it's like, we can make it entertaining, but you gotta understand we had that part of war where it's like, we are behind, behind. We really just want to tell you to shut up, sit down, listen, take instructions, don't do nothing else, but follow exactly what we tell you to do and you will succeed. But we don't have a people like that. We rebellious as hell. So mm -hmm. somebody tell you to do that and it's going to put you off. You understand me? So instead, you know, Dr. Collis said you have to be inspirational and educational. I was talking with Brandon Marshall about this a, a little earlier is that the entertaining allows you to get make people comfortable. And it's like when you're laughing with somebody and you drop a jewel on them, they open. So the defenses is down. When you're serious, the defenses are up because you're critically thinking, you're overanalyzing. So when somebody telling you something, right, you're putting it through all of these filters on whether this is valuable or not. You understand me? And then oftentimes or not, because we don't have a wealth trained mindset, we go into over audit uh, uh, assets and under audit liabilities. You understand me? Like when it comes to us to spend money on something that doesn't matter, won't give us a return, we're going to over audit that. But uh, when it comes to something that can give you a return, whether it's a course, whether it's going to a seminar, whether it's spending this time learning something, we're going to think about that a thousand times before we make the decision to just do it. So we have to hypnotically catch people in a rhythm of openness and relaxation. Then we can drop the jewels on them. You understand me? And then that's when we can start making some sort of headway with us. No, I agree. I agree. Well, let me, so what do y'all think when we talk about culture? Culture is this buzzword. Everybody talk about culture. What the hell really is culture? We never really define what the values of culture, what the rituals, the rights of culture. Because there's no rites of passage. Not to be a man, to be a woman, to be considered part of the culture. Now the rites of passage is money. You know what I'm saying? If you, if you sell enough records, we consider you to be great. You know what I'm saying? You have a hit, we consider you to be a part of the culture, but... Number one, it, there, there's, what is the standard that says that this person is good for the culture? Mm. Because my reality now is that I'm not trying to protect the culture. I'm not even trying to be a part of it. I'm trying to create a new one. Because I don't think that the one that we currently have is worth saving. Because it's built on a, 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 a negative foundation. You understand me? And we go about trying to create culture and justify culture like capitalists. You know, we become our worst enemy. So if we were to start a new culture today, day one, you understand me? What that look like? How do we visualize a new culture for we walking outside and that person that you would trust to be a part of your circle that you say, man, this person is doing something good for this new culture that we create. What does that look like? Who represents that ideas of a new culture? Yeah, I think um, as far as the word culture, it's, it's one of these words that just gets thrown around a lot. And um, I feel like, you know, in some regards, we have a culture. In some regards, we really don't have a culture. We have kind of a makeshift culture. When I say that, it's like, you know, you look at, like, different parts of the world. And, you know, it's deep-rooted. Like, as far as, like, you go to India or you go to Nigeria or wherever, they have traditions as far as, like, how you get married, what you wear when you get married, traditional stuff. We, you know, obviously everybody knows our history as far as how we was ripped from Africa and planted in mm -hmm. America. And so we don't really, we kind of, our, our culture is just kind of made up of other cultures. So like even our wedding ceremony, that's like a European wedding ceremony. That's not something that we made up. We right. just, we adopted it, right? Even like jumping a broom, that's that's from slavery. That's not something that right. really should be celebrated. That's when they what they had to do because they had no other option, but we're not slaves anymore. So we're not jumping brooms. But I understand and I appreciate, you know, the homage that they're paying to slavery. Um, you know, as far as our music, you know, we we made the music, we made hip hop, we made the blues, like that's something that we made, but that's still new, young. It's not like that's been around forever, right? And those are all parts of different 
rhythmic sounds that come mm -hmm. from, you know, different parts of the world, Africa, things of that nature. And we just kind of put it together. So we really made a meal out of scraps, literally, like even our food, like, you know what I'm saying? Soul food, that was literally the scraps that was given to the slaves. Mm -hmm. And we made we made a delicacy out of it, but it might not be the, the most productive thing. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? So that's 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 probably the best example. We made the most out of the scraps that we was given, but it's still poison at the end of the day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like, yeah, you know, all of that is good because we 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 made something out of nothing, but now we actually have to elevate. Now we're educated. Now we're open to the world. Now we can actually understand that a lot of those things that we did previously. Even though they're tradition, they're not they're not progressive, right? And they're not positive. Yeah. So, as far as creating a new culture, I think it um, education is in the forefront. You know, as far as that's extremely important because that was something that our culture was never really, you know, built on education. Even mm -hmm. though we we did make education a priority, as far as like. You know, it was always part of like the civil rights movement. Well, I think we lost a lot of that that aspect where it's like let's go back to Marcus Garvey, right? Marcus Garvey was educating people, and during that time, like he showed people how to you know jump into industry, do business, right? Establish you know uh, um, charters around the world. Like, and his wasn't a, a religious organization. You understand mm -hmm. me? It was just about men and women, you know, having honor and value. You understand me? And he basically respected anybody that was righteous in their character. You understand me? Mm -hmm. That has some sort of belief within self and that moved with character, right? And, you know, when you go back, we had high literacy rates in our community. We were very intelligent. Like, for us to be able to build Greenwood, it took a high level of financial literacy to do that. Well, what I was saying was, like, the education has always been important for us. Like, we always fought for education. We fought to integrate schools. We fought to go to college. We fought for education, but there's different types of education. We always fought for the formal education because we thought that that's the pathway to the American dream. Like mm -hmm. if we actually were educated, if we went to schools, then we would get a good job and then we could provide for our family, we can buy a home. And you see that that hasn't worked. Mm -hmm. So I'm not knocking formal education because I do think that there is some level of utilization for formal education. But what I'm saying, education is like now we have to have more broad range education. And this is what our platform was built on as far as educating right. people on entrepreneurship, educating people on investing, educating people on, you know, traveling the world, the ways of the world, diplomacy, politics. These are things that we still were never fully educated on. We were educated on how to read, how to write, how to do math, different things of that nature we were never fully educated on how politics work. Mm -hmm. We were never fully educated on how the banking system actually works. We were never fully educated on how entrepreneurship actually works it's on a broad scale. You can have like, you know, pockets like Greenwood, but on a broad scale, we were never fully educated on well, let me, it. Let me ask you, do you let, think- Let me just add to what he's saying, because what he's saying is powerful, yeah. right? Because I'm coming from an education system. And I think you might've mentioned it before. It was like, we were taught how to think now what to think, right? Mm -hmm. So like that critical thinking piece. But what we to were, think, we, not how to not think. How to yeah. think, right? So like we were never taught how to be critical thinkers. Mm -hmm. And so when you're a critical thinker, now you're looking at these all those issues that he's talking about, you start seeing them differently. You start being very interested. You try to figure out the solution to them. When you're taught what to think, That's it's like technical thinking. I'm gonna say, all right, well, I gotta read this, read this, read this, so I can answer that. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that's what we were taught. Like even now, like kids will Read this, read this, read this, pass this test, move on. Right. You might not have learned anything. Right. All you knew was how to take that test. Yeah. But the critical thinking is, all right, well, I'm going to figure out why they're even asking this question. Right. So I can solve my own answers and I'll have the answer for this one too. Yeah. And then when you start growing with that that mindset of to being able to critically think, that changes your mindset on everything. And to creatively think. This episode is brought to you by Gold Water. In my book, shameless plug. I talk about uh, abstract thinking versus technical thinking. Like, you know, we learn to do things as is. We not learn how to think for ourselves. Like when we talked about on The Breakfast Club, like when you teach a student, you rob them the ability to creatively learn. Mm -hmm. You understand me? If you teach them everything, they have to do no thinking after that, right? And thinking is a deliberate thought. We don't actually think a lot. We, we are just operating 
on a rhythm and a pattern of what we already know. We're not actually taking time on our mind to put mental energy into things. That takes a lot of energy and actually to do. Mm -hmm. And so the average person doesn't actually do that much thinking throughout the day. So we're not really good at thinking for ourselves. So when we want to know a subject and opinion on something, we look to outsource it from somebody else who's already done the thinking. Right. You understand me? And so to think for yourself, and not only that, to creatively think is that child who was never robbed of their own mind. You understand me? When, you know, when you're young, when you start, when you become a good student that can follow the rules, you already destroying your creative thinking. Because no student, no child wants to actually follow the rules. That's what they did to the Indian, right? They considered the Indian civilized. And civilization and being civilized is basically coming under military jurisdiction. You're now following civil code and conduct. But that's not naturalized. Who are you naturally? Civil I mean you basically obeying the laws of that land. And the rulers continue. that Now they say you civilized and you can operate under that construct. Mm -hmm. So the Indians, or the Native Americans rather, because they weren't Indians because... We know that uh, brother got lost, you understand me, thought he was in India, you understand me, after he heard the Africans had came over here. So that's just the history in there, you understand me, Christopher, we only acknowledge we out here in New York, you know, sure. you know it's Wallace, you feel me? So, <laughs> little brother in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so bro got lost, but the Native Americans, you know, they had their own rituals, you understand me, they had their own movements, they was connected with the spirits and the land, and they understood the herbs, and they had peace, they didn't have no wars going on, but they were considered savage by the standards of Christopher Columbus, you understand me, and the Europeans that came over here, and it wasn't until, you know, um, they, of course, they, they, they uh, uh, practice, uh, what's the word I'm looking for when you kill a mass amount of people? Genocide? Genocide, mm -hmm. yes. After the genocide, you know, they made them cut their hair, you understand me, uh, wear their uniforms, put them in school, right? And now this new version that's been civilized is considered the civil one, you understand me, and the good one. I mean, that's the same thing that happens to children, though. They have all this creativity. They connected to spirit. They connected to themselves, right? They question everything, you understand me, abundantly, and they really already original creative genius thinkers and if you foster that then you great because being a parent is not so much of being an authoritarian it's really about fostering what's already within that child that's what being a teacher is like i'm bringing what's in you out mm -hmm. but it's already there mm -hmm. but teachers feel like they are better and you master so no i'm giving you everything and if you can give me back what i gave you then now you become a better person no you just made me like you you just subjected me to your rulership and your thinking. So I only say that to say that the-, the Very intentionally though. Huh? Very intentionally. Very, that's the whole point. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. the whole point of college is to create a workforce. That's it. I mean, you can, you can fancify it. You can say it's breaking generational rules, curses. You can put whatever grandma sauce you want to on it. The reality of it is, is to create a workforce. You understand me? It ain't about- Black people building some wealth and some power and getting to a point of nation building and correcting any of the solutions. It's literally about a workforce. So if we learn how to look at institutions for what they are, I think they can then stop robbing us and we can use them for a tool for specifically of what that tool can do. Mm -hmm. But we look at these things like magical institutions that's going to put us into a fairy tale ending. And that ain't the reality. Yeah. You understand me? So the miseducation system, you understand me, uh, is the issue. But that's what created our job security. You understand me? Like, how could you teach anything? How could we teach most of the things that we teach if it wasn't taught? You understand me? We got to first find a problem, solve that problem, and that creates a business for us. But now, do y'all think from, you know, you have students, right? People that tap in, but do you think they're good learners? Um, you think it's hard to teach people concepts nowadays? Is it tough? Um, I, I guess it depends, right? Because it's like, and that's one of the things he said. There's multiple ways to teach, and so uh, what you said makes makes a lot of sense. It was like this, especially in a formal situation. It's like, all right, here's a question, here's the answer. Yeah. But in this world, there's multiple answers, mm -hmm. and so how do we get them to get to that point where we realize that hey, there's multiple answers to the same question? It's like my son, he was doing second grade math, and I, he's getting the answer but not the way they want him to. Yeah. And I can't tell him he's wrong. Yeah. I'm like, nah, this is right. Yeah. 
But like he's like, when I go to school, they're gonna tell me this is wrong because I didn't get it the way they wanted. Them. That boy, I had a teacher named Mrs. Smith. Boy, to this day, she made me. She made me dislike math. <laughs> you understand me because she told me to solve the problem a certain way right in my head i could solve the problem and i can get to the answer but i couldn't show my work because that's how my brain thinks exactly you understand me but she was like no if you can't solve the problem the way i told you to it then you go fail it so i'm like i looked at school like this is a scam this ain't yeah. real because it was who's the indication on if you yeah. can't get it the way she said it it's really her supposed to teach me on my level of intelligence yeah, brain was in me out like right. how did you get this answer Let's figure out your process because that's going to help you think through life. Right. That's, that's what I'm simple. saying. You you got to the solution, which, yeah. is, which is the ultimate goal. Yeah. But if I if you don't get it the way I've taught it, then I haven't done my job. Right? Because somebody's going somebody's to come in and say, wait, this is not the method we showed yeah. you. This is not what the grade level said. This is not what the state says. Right. How they're supposed to learn. And that's like, I'm a deductive, for? deductive reasoner. So... You know, I'm going to figure out things like, okay, this is, therefore that is, right? That's how my mind starts calculating things really quickly. And so it's hard to show that on paper, especially when you're doing mathematics, because I never sometimes knew how I got it. And nobody actually helped me foster the understanding of my own intelligence and my way of thinking. So it was like, you will feel like you're not that smart is if you can't learn to think like other people and solve problems their way. And so the child that may have got else could have been a whole genius you understand me? And his genius could have been the fact that his brain won't fit in this institution because he may have a better way of learning. Mm -hmm. And you're trying to cram all my genius into a box. You understand me? And it's like, bro, my brain calculates way faster than that. Why are you trying to tell me to use these primitive techniques? But as a student, you tell him that, now you got behavior issues. You understand me? Now he got ADHD, can't focus in school. I can't focus in some bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Like, why am I trying to focus on this when it's not the best way to develop myself? Mm -hmm. You feel me? So that's that that uphill battle is and I don't think it's so much about just instruction, but more so about the mindset. You feel me? I think the mindset that we have nowadays is tough to cultivate. This episode is brought to you by Goldwater. Y'all ever heard my letter to Garcia? No. Nah. Well, it's not mine, but it's something uh, I learned from my pops. He told me a, a long time ago, man. He was a part of an organization out in Oakland, California. He was the captain of his organization. It was a central head and he was a millionaire. He had his own bakery and there was other brothers that worked for him. And so, you know, of course he the breadwinner, pun intended, you understand me? <laughs> but then he got the soldiers. Now the soldiers can go out and bring business to this organization. Now he didn't have to tell the soldiers exactly what to do. It was just, listen, y'all got the leeway to go out there and bring something to the fold. Take a look around with all that's here. Look at the organization, the people, the manpower, right? The resources, what we can do with this. Think creatively, go out there in the world, bring something back. So the soldiers came back with security contracts. They came back with different contracts for coliseums and all sorts of different things. The head didn't know how to do the business the soldier was doing, but the soldiers didn't need to know every single thing. And he called that concept taking a letter to Garcia, where it was like, if I tell you to take this letter to Garcia, if that's my only instructions, here's the letter to Garcia. Mm -hmm. Boom. Go ahead and take that, brother. Take that to Garcia. You understand me? Mm -hmm. What you gonna do next? Come back, get another book to take to Garcia. Yeah. See, that's the mind of a yeah. person who's not gonna make excuses. But if you give one person a piece of information, you understand, you take that letter to Garcia. Now, let's imagine you the type of brother, you gonna be like, man, who the hell is Garcia? How do I find them? How do I get there? I ain't got a car. I ain't got enough information. That's not how you're supposed to operate today. You understand me? When I say we overly informed, we think that we never have enough. But you have enough. It's like if I was the person that tell you about crypto, you go study in Google and research. You understand me? And then you will wait till you will wait till uh, you get the next opportunity to talk to me to try to get the answer. So the gap between you getting there, you using me as your excuse. Instead of there was a time where young men were willful, and that story came from, it was a soldier actually in wartime, and a general told him to take this letter to Garcia. Now, this person was across the battlefield, damn near impossible to get there, but the soldier didn't ask, like, man, how the hell am I going to get there? I know this is important for the war, but how the hell am I actually going to get through this battlefield? I might get killed. But the soldier said, you know, give me the letter. I'm going to take it. No excuses. He went across the battlefield. He delivered that letter to Garcia. You understand me? And they was actually able to win that battle, right? And in life, people don't have that willfulness to just go out there, be focused, commit themselves, be determined, and do it 
against all odds. We look for every level of excuse as a reason on why we don't go to the next step and come to that next level. And in organizations such as yourself and mine, you got to have people around you who go getters. You understand me? Who just take them letters with no excuses and they come back with the results. You understand me? Like that's one of the things with my students. I'm like, yo, just if I after I give you a lesson, you got to come back with results after each one. Like we not, I'm not about, I'm just not church. So I'm not here to just talk to you and give you motivation. If I gave you some knowledge, you should get you some results after that. Then come back to the Garcia room with that letter complete. You understand me? Every time you got to deliver that letter. But how much is that as trust? I want it because like. No, I think that's that. I don't think it has anything to do with trust. I think it has to do with the 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 mindset of belief in self. Mm -hmm. You understand me? And that will that you have to go out there and execute. Like my older brother used to tell me stuff. He used to put me on missions when I was younger. Right. And I used to think, like, damn, man, this sounds impossible. How the hell am I going to do this? Like, in my mind, I start coming up with hella reasons why I can't do it. And basically, he didn't accept a single excuse from me. You understand me? I don't give a damn how you go do it. You just got to do it. You understand me? And so I know when I stepped out that door, if I don't come back with it complete, I'm going to get my ass whooped. Mm -hmm. So guess what? I'm going to figure out how to get it done. And what I realized about myself is every time I made an excuse, shit was false in the first place. I was just comfortable making excuses because I can validate that. You understand me? And I can get sympathy for it. Mm -hmm. And so now it's like men are always looking for sympathy. Women are always looking for sympathy instead of finding a way. And I think we got more resources, tools, and power than any other point in time in history. So we should have the least amount of excuses in history. That's that's my concept. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it ain't really hard for us to get rich, get money, build wealth. Besides the fact that we overindulge in our excuses and we don't like to find reason. Yeah, I don't, I'm asking that because I'm thinking, you said it was your brother. And mm -hmm. so there's a certain level of trust you have because it is your brother. No, he was just crazy. He's crazy. I don't know. I'm just saying. But just, <laughs> shout just, out to my brother. Shout out to your brother. But I'm just saying, when you talk about a new culture, right? Like, that's one of those things that we have to build is that level of trust with each other mm. and understand it, right? Like, that's Pac, right? I'll do it since, since Pac is your guy. Yeah. And we've had great debates about Pac, but he's like, yo... I got love for my brother, but we can't go nowhere unless we, we yeah. build with each other. Okay, like use that, that pocket line. Yes, yeah, sir. so we're talking about building, sharing, trusting each other. And so oh, in order to get to that new space of like, yo, we got to work together, right? We always talk about collaboration over competition. It was mm -hmm. like, yo, we have to have that level of trust, right? Until there is an instance of mistrust. I don't know if we're going to get there in the time span that we need. It's like if you at war... And you're trying to establish trust between you and the soldiers so that they can take your order to win the war. Yeah, but then we know we got a common goal, right? Like, I tr we trying to win this. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like, that 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 common goal that we now have together is like, all right. But imagine y'all not trusting each other. Right. You understand me? It's why the ship is sinking. And it's like, you ain't got to trust me. It's just, <laughs> right. We ain't got no other choice right that's now. That's what we at. That's what I'm saying. That's what we, we at. On the ship and, we on a, a ship that's sinking, and we trying to figure out how to trust each other. Like, bro. If I tell you to, to plug up the hole, let's do it. And you trying to be like, why are you telling me to do it? Why you don't do it? Like, right. why are we going back and forth with who the captain of the ship when we won't have one in a second? Right. You know what I'm saying? I, I feel like that's a microcosm for where we at. Yeah. Like, we trying to figure out, like, oh, no, I don't listen to... But, like, nah, bro, this ship is sinking. Yeah. Like, no, that's a fact. You know what I'm saying? I mean, look at the culture, man. Let me let me check that down. Let's get a shit, because we can just go off. This episode is brought to you by Gold Water. Look at the culture right now, man. It's just sad in a lot of different ways. It's, 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 it's a beautiful storm, man, of things that's happening. Because it's like, as we make steps, there's other people plotting against to stop those steps already. You understand me? And they do it in the name of critique or they do it in the name of whatever they want to. But what I realize, I think more so than anything, I think there's people that just want to be recognized and they get hurt. Mm. You understand me? They they see something so beautiful and they want to be a part of it, but they know they really can't be because of their personality, their character type, who they are, what they got going on. And so instead of recognizing that about themselves, right, they take the anger out. You understand me? It's like, shit, well, if I can't be with them, then I'm against them. Mm -hmm. You understand me? And there are certain aspects of empathy that I have with that, but at the same time, it's like you got to check the things within yourself first before you try to work with others. You understand me? Yeah, yeah. And instead of trying to blame things on everybody else, anytime something don't go right for me, I'm always looking of extreme ownership. What the hell is going on with me where I can't get along with other people? I can't work with people. People don't like me. They don't want me a part of a circle. People ask me all the time how I get along with people. And I just, I just don't do no sucker shit. I mean, I ain't got a special formula that I just follow. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to make people like me. 
And because at the end of the day, I don't care if people like me per se, because I think I'm, I've always been likable. So I've, I've never been like a thing of mine. I just try to be a brother. And I got enough brothers to know how to be a brother, but I've always worked with tough love, so I can't get, I can't, I can't function with everybody. You know what I'm saying? Because I might have to slap somebody. You know what I'm saying? You know I might have to get real Willish. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's a, it's Will just gave himself a new uh, analogy connected to fact. his name That's now. now a verb. One week <laughs> ago, getting Willish wasn't the same. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> prayers up for Chris. But 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 to that point though, man. So it's like, you know, we talked about the state of the culture before, you know, um, I think the, what gives us that we got black media and we got hip hop could be possibly the greatest, you know, ships that take us to our destination. You understand? But it also could be the greatest enemy. You understand me? Because it becomes gatekeepers. You understand me? And then it becomes people who hoard and take attention away from what we doing. You understand me? And what I say, we, and what are we doing? We literally trying to teach our families. That includes whether it's the person that don't like us or the person that is against us or taking away the attention. We teaching everybody at the end of the day. I get information from y'all. Y'all get information from me. I get information from people I don't like. Never go let nobody character stop me from learning what's in their mind. You understand me? That's the difference. And I think the immaturity that happens is, is why I always talk about blockchain just because I know that, you know, a, 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 a protocol that's mathematics don't have to have trust. You understand me? And that's what, you know, blockchain is, is mathematics. When you hey, when you ask me what's today's mathematics, God, it's a whole new uh, 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 language to that now. Mm -hmm. This is the way we build trust in between each other because it's trustless. I ain't got to trust you. Mm -hmm. Or it's like, if I can bring 20 entities together that got ferocious egos, Issues, problems separately. If we tried to do business and put together a contract, it'd be damn near impossible. But if we can put a protocol in on the blockchain that says, listen, I'm going to plug everybody's uh, a percentage of profit, everybody's um, a, a goal that they need to do. You understand me? Everything involved in this business, in this contract. And all everybody do is play their part. And then we got a performance built into this protocol as well. If you don't play your part, then we can vote you out of this. Mm. You understand me? It's no longer about trust. It's just about people playing their part. You understand me? And within the smart contract, it's going to automatically cut you on or off. You understand me? It ain't got nothing to do with me. That's that's just what that's the reality of it. So it's like, do I think we can get to trust each other before we can use blockchain so where we don't need to trust each other? I'm going to use the blockchain. Yeah, we had that conversation this weekend. We were sitting at lunch and... um people talk about by any means necessary, but they don't really mean that, right? It was like- Never. Different- Who means that? Different cultures will work with each other even when they don't like each other. Right? Like they- ain't got shit to do with That's what I say, they, like you saying, like I don't care if anybody likes me. Like they'll, they'll work together even when they don't like each other and they'll do it for extended periods of time and for generations of a time. Yeah. And when you think about it, I was just like, we all, I don't like him, I can't, I can't do I can't do, do business with him. Get out your feelings. But we can't, right? It's like, I, I ain't rocking with them. I can't do business with them. And it's like, nah, bro. Like, if you're talking about by any means, like, yeah, put ego to the side, put everything to the side, what's moving us forward? Yeah. But we don't do that. You know what I'm but saying? But at the same time, there is a character check. Like, you can't be doing sucker shit, though. So, but you said that wasn't a special trait, but that is. He's like, I don't do nothing special. I just don't do sucker shit. Like, that's that's special in itself. Yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, growing up, I want I don't want to look at that as special because that's sad when that becomes special. You know that's, what I'm saying? That's where we at. Like, I think that's the issue. It's like, if not doing something sucker is special, then it's like, then you look around and be like, damn, it's only special because everybody else is suckers. You know what I'm saying? And of course, perspective is, you know, in, to each his own, to where one person may think, you know, doing something weird is commendable. But I think now if people just justify it because they say, oh, well, I don't have any other choice. It's kind of one of those things. Mm -hmm. They're like, I can't do what y'all do, so I'm going to choose the weird route. That's how rappers are nowadays. You understand me? I'm not lyrical, so I'm going to paint my nails. I'm going to get tatted everywhere. I'm going to wear purses, dresses, whatever to get attention. Because guess what? This is my new rock star persona because I can't do the lyrical Nas, Kendrick, J delivery. So I think that that's how it is. Maybe we the J's. <laughs> People going to be mad at me now. <laughs> no, you said it right. I mean, the J's, the Pox, and the Nas's. You understand me? <laughs> Y'all choose who J and Nas over there. You understand me? <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and everybody like, well, shit, I can't be that. So I'm gonna be, you know, uh, give me a give me a bad rapper. 
What's 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 the what's the little dude who made the Gucci song? <laughs> Who's a better? Oh, Lil Pump. Lil Pump. That's a good example. They gonna be a Lil Pump or something. You understand me? <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I think I think you know it's it's one of these things where um you know the most easy the easiest thing to do is just be yourself in this world, and I felt like that's something that you know a lot of people struggle with. You no, know, I think the hardest thing is to be yourself in this world. Now, this world. Well. I mean, I guess it's, it's all about perspective, but I feel like when you're not being yourself and you're acting and it's only so long that you can, like what they say, it's only so long fake, fake thugs, thugs can pretend, right? but that's not even just thugs, that's just people just yeah. in general. It's only it's only so long that you can play a character. Eventually you're going you're gonna to fall off because mm -hmm. you're not that person. And I feel like people feel like if they're not getting the attention that they need or that they want, then they start to be somebody that they're not. Or, you know, jealousy is, is a disease of the heart. So, you know, jealousy is shown in many different ways. Like, you know, if you if you look at Macbeth, that's one of the greatest plays ever written. And you watch uh, it, Denzel? I didn't see that yet, but I, I definitely want to watch it. But you know, it's a story of jealousy and um people become jealous of other people. And instead of actually saying that they're jealous, they'll disguise it in a way of critique or criticism or going out and doing stuff. And it's like when you really get to the root of it, it's like, what's the real issue? Oh, I'm not friends with you. I'm not. I'm not on your platform. I don't have a relationship with you. You're getting too much attention. I know more than you, and people are giving you the the credibility that I de I personally feel mm -hmm. like I deserve. Like you know what I'm saying. So that happens all the time. But yeah, the but right the, the problem with the problem with that is that you're never gonna become bigger than that person. Mm. And that and that's the part that's it's 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 a never ending cycle of frustration. Nine times out of ten, the people that are jealous, hating, and doing all of this, they're never gonna become bigger than that person. Mm. Like you know what I'm saying? So it's like now you 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 literally are living in misery, preying on somebody else's downfall, and every single day you got to see that they didn't actually fall. Yeah. And now it's just making you even matter inside. Yeah. Nobody ever hated their way to success. Mm. It's not it's it's not a successful blueprint. It's not a successful blueprint, like you know what I'm saying. But for some reason, people don't understand that. It's, it's way more successful to actually lead with positively, lead with collaboration. That that's where all the success is. Cause then people want you around. Yeah, lead with service. Then they invite you in rooms, mm -hmm. give you keys to different doors. Yeah, and because because they know by proxy of me introducing you to somebody else, they get that benefit. Like, yo, you introduced me, they hella cool. Yeah. You understand me? But if you got a reputation of not being a good person, nobody wants to introduce you to nobody, especially not an opportunity. Like oh, energy, like me? energy attracts other like energy. So yeah. if you're a positive person, you're gonna be around other positive people, positive things will happen. If you're a negative person, you're gonna attract negative people. This is why when you see hater, Nine times out of ten, their whole circle is haters. Mm -hmm. You don't see a hater around a bunch of people that's doing their thing that's positive. That's a fact. You know what I'm saying? Nine times out of ten, you see a hater, everybody around him is on that same type of time. Yeah. You see somebody that's really moving and shaking out here, nine times out of ten, everybody around him is on that same type yeah. of time. Because you can't, they don't They don't attract the same. Yeah. And the, the rooms that you're going to get for that positive energy is going to be much more beneficial than the rooms you're going to get for that negative energy because yeah. there's going to be room for the negative energy because there's always going to be a level of toxicity that people just like to enjoy yeah but that's entertainment mm -hmm. people will just use you for entertainment it's not actually going anywhere though it's right. not going to lead you to anywhere big but you could actually get some eyeballs and some ears because it's entertaining but where does that what's the end goal yeah, I think oftentimes people don't even have a big enough vision for the rooms that they want to get into. Mm -hmm. You just want to be there. <laughs> you understand me? If you don't have a vision, it's like I would feel guilty if I'm just going places and I don't have a way to capitalize and use this for something. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and you know, I was always taught usefulness determines your value. So like, if this not useful to me, it has no value to me. And that's just the reality. And a lot of people trick themselves because they are entertaining themselves, but they make it seem like they're doing business. Yeah. You know? And And... That's a complex that you got to break out of, but that jealousy frequency is not something that's easily uh, um, seen within self. You understand me? Because I think for me, the, the grace was having a lot of brothers and sisters. You understand me? I have an older brother and I got younger brothers. I got somebody up to look up to and I got people to teach. You understand me? So I understand the dynamics of both. And, you know, all my brothers, they look like me, good looking characters. You understand me? So at the end of the day, when I remember just in dealing with women, I think, and in, in, in that's super key right there, when it comes to dealing with women, you know, I know that my brothers can get, you know, you know, at a certain point in time, you know what I'm saying? But 
when we growing up, we go to the clubs, we go to the lounges or whatever. I used to have this thought process that you understand me. Listen, every woman in the world wants me, and ain't nobody that look at me go looking at nobody else. You understand me? And then here come my brother, smooth ass, looking just like me with a whole nother flavor. So they looking at both of us. You understand me? And then I had to realize, like, come on, man. You know, you got to share this world. You understand me? And it allowed me to never attach some jealousy frequency to it at that. You understand me? Like, bro, supposed to be able to do that. He's sharp. Handsome brother, know how to move, got confidence, know how to talk, same bloodline. And I extend that grace to everybody. Like, why would I want to be selfish and only want things to attract to me? Nah, I want to hang around other players that know how to move in that space and that can attract quality things as well. Mm -hmm. And what's for me going to be for me. What's not for me is for the streets. You understand me? That's just the reality. But I don't think enough men learn how to talk to women, be around women. And I think really that comes at, at, at the core of a lot of issues as well that people don't see. It's the insecurity. Yeah. You understand me? When they can't bring... It, it feels like when you got a light that shines bright, you understand me? People always feel like they can't shine as bright as you, but they're not supposed to compare their light. You know what I mean? That's what people lose a lot. You understand mm -hmm. me? It's like, I might be a sun, you might be a light bulb, but we ain't in competition. Mm -hmm. You might light up a room, I might light up the world. You understand me? But light up your room and enjoy that light. You understand me? And then once you learn how to produce more illumination based on the work, your intellect, you understand me? Yo, 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 prowess, your confidence, then that's when you move to that next stage. But instead of being jealous of a person, learn from that person so that you can get on equal ground and go farther. Yeah. And you, you gotta prepare for that stage though too. Cause a lot of times people will, they want to acquire success, right? And if they somewhat achieved what they thought was success, mm -hmm. they don't have a plan after. Like what happens next? Yeah, It's the same thing like you said, what you admire and you sought after a girl, once you get it, now what? Mm -hmm. Do you know how to treat that girl? Do you know how to take care of her? Do right. you know how to be a man right. in a relationship? Do you know these things? Yeah. Like nobody's prepared for that, but everybody wants it. And the money issue. Getting money can turn you to a sucker. You understand me? Because you never had the opportunity to finance your suckiness. You understand me? <laughs> like for real. When, That's hard. When, That's hard. When, when you got nothing to do and you got money, you just start doing shit just because you can finance little dumb thoughts. I mean, I don't, I don't me? think the money turns you to a sucker. I think that's already, that's, 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 that's your character. What? I it's, mean, it's like, it magnifies your character. It, it magnifies, but it finances it. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you can now, like, shoot content about stuff. You can go travel and, and, and you can finance certain thoughts and you feel like you can afford it because you got the money. Where, like, when you broke, you may be more humble and not do certain things because you feel like you can't afford to do that. I still got to network with people. I got to build with people. I can't do this. This ain't going to work. Once you get the money, you feel free enough to, 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 to live that aspect of yourself. And you stop listening to other people so you become, you know, uh, uh, um, deaf to people trying to help you with your ego because you feel like you got it all now. Mm -hmm. And well, I need to listen to somebody. I make millions of dollars. You understand me? And, and when people start measuring themselves by their money instead of their character, that's when they lose. You know, and I think that's probably a big issue. It's a lot of people with money right now, but they ain't got no character. You ain't got no power. Nobody really likes you. The women don't like you. It could be a brother broke. You know, and she looking at his energy because he got more confidence and spirit. You understand me? He, he believes in himself in a different capacity. He's not comparing himself to nobody else. So you can just bought her a Birkin bag, but she gonna go with the brother that got confidence that can make her laugh. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Because you start doing all this sucker corniness because you start measuring your value by your money. And this person still measuring themselves by their spirit. That's a different type of game. Mm. You understand me? Yeah. I'm from wow. Oakland, so you know, it's just... Hey, you was who you was before you got here. <laughs> That's a fact. That's a fact. But but pivoting, man. Um, this episode is brought to you by Gold Water. Um, I want to talk about this for a second. Just back to state of the culture, just a little bit, because we talk about media, right? I think media is very powerful. You understand me? I've I've had the opportunity to talk with Gilly and Brandon Marshall this month, and then you all. Um, and when I think about black media, right, there was a black media company. What was it? A uh, black something that just got shut down. It was owned by an Indian guy. Um, it was the Black News Network. Black News Network that was shut down. Yeah, after two right? years. But number one, it was never a black news network unless we owned it. We got to start making those qualifications. Yeah, it was the, the owner of the, the Jaguars owned it. Yeah. yeah. And, and he, you know, and they said it was starting to get an uptick in ratings, but he no longer wanted to pour any money into it. Mm -hmm. And they was covering the situation with the judge, the Supreme Court judge, heavily. You understand me? 
Um, and I can't tell you, you know, why or anyone want to ponder a guess to what the reasons were. But the fact remains, we have to stop, number one, calling things black unless we own it. That's just a fact. It's not black owned. Mm -hmm. You understand me? So therefore, it ain't the black network. You understand me? It, whoever owns it is their network. You understand me? That's how I'm looking at it. So it was an Indian news network that got shut down that were, you know, had black content on there, right? That's that's the reality of it. But media is the most powerful, powerful resource we have. Because we going from hip hop to music to media narrative. You understand me? Now, once you get into that boat, that's where the power lies, right? We go to the top leaders. You know, I always bring this up. You go to Frederick Douglass. You know, um, as an abolitionist, he had what's called the North Star, I believe. He had his newspaper. He could spread his ideas to the people across the lands. That's how he got influence. Because otherwise, how could you take one idea and get into across the town to another city, right? Somebody read this and say, man. And, you know, only the intelligent people was reading it because the illiterates, they couldn't read it. You understand me? So you had the high... A uh, 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 people of intellect listening to this and now he able to go back and forth and convey knowledge and information to those who teaching everybody else then you have uh marcus garvey you understand me who had uh what was his called i can't think of it right now i think it's the same as his uh his uh black star line you understand me but he had his own newspaper you understand me that's how he was able to get his message across all of those chapters on social media so how the hell he get thousands and thousands of followers and chapters around the world today you go look at that Ghana flag and that black stars because of Marcus Garvey his ideas spread globally mm -hmm. right um and then you had Malcolm X right Malcolm X founded the Muhammad Speaks you understand me for the honorable Elijah Muhammad he was able to spread those ideas then you have the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan who found the final call now he was able to spread those ideas right and so when we talk about media, media is the most powerful tool when it comes to the reformation of our minds. You understand me? And today, where you have rappers, entertainers, influencers, just because I, I look at this like we are going through cycles of evolution that we might not even realize, right? Where we go from like Web 3, Web 2, Web 1, Web 2, Web 3, where it's read only, read and copy, and then own the data. Right. Everything is going towards this revolution that we have to own this now. Mm -hmm. And that's all people, organizations, corporations, all they realizing there's no way I should set up anything where it's dependent on anybody else. COVID is making us realize this more because during COVID, we had to get supplies from China and masks at different places. And there was different governments that was dependent on other governments who may not have been as friendly and who was charging different taxes and prices at different levels. And this was supposed to be a pandemic. There was different neighborhoods in America, black people specifically as well, that couldn't get certain supplies and resources. Dependency, right? And then, you know, you fast forward with the supply chain issues and the war on Ukraine, everybody's looking at what's happening to Russia, right? Russia getting squeezed with all this economic uh, 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 warfare and these other countries looking like, damn, what if that was us? What if we made a decision and the new cabal decides to squeeze us and put sanctions on us? So let's make sure that now, we have our factories and our ownership in-house. Let's make more of our own thing. Every country is doing that. Every every company, corporation, all of them are deciding to make more, right? Depend less. So it's not just something that we're looking at on, you know, a black and white America level. This is a global level scale thing that's happening, right? Mm -hmm. New formations of community dependence and, you know, interdependence within self is what's happened. Everybody becoming a prosumer. Produce what you consume. Produce what you consume. So now we at this point where the next import that we have is going to be media. Our greatest next import is media. We can export all the influence, ideas. I've seen Elon Musk talking about creating a social network. Why would you be a billionaire on a platform that's censoring you when you can create your own platform? You understand me? Kanye West said it. Why would I take $100 million to bring Donda Media to Apple when I can create my own media company? Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense. You got a billion dollars and you don't say, I'm going to put all this money into the talent and my peoples and the peoples around me and I own it. Because like, then you can broadcast whatever message. Then Fox News or whatever message that you think is fake or you think not giving you a fair narrative, you create your own. You can't suspend you from that. Yeah, you can cancel... Uh, 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 creators, but not owners. You understand me? You can't counsel an owner. That's mine. So 
when we talk about media today, what do you think, what's the future of media look like as far as it being a resource for our own liberation? I think it's extremely important. Um, and you know, the, the thing that we have now that they didn't have before was social media. Mm. So, you know, that really has transformed everything. Mm-hmm. Been able to get, you know, messages across the world for a low barrier of, of price, free, really. You know, you know, think about it previously, you know, you have to have thousands of dollars, even millions of dollars to print up, you know, magazines or to print up, you know, newspapers. And then you actually have to distribute the newspapers. You got to have some, you know, a whole warehouse. There's a whole supply chain for that operation. Now you can actually just make, you know, an Instagram post, put it out there. 10,000 people can see it instantly. So that changed everything mm-hmm. changed everything you know y'all brothers so powerful i just realized y'all the only brothers got their media logo in my podcast <laughs> <laughs> welcome to anybody on network <laughs> the big welcome sign that's the big welcome sign <laughs> yes one of many this has to live somewhere <laughs> one, of many. one of many yeah but not the media the media is where it's at you know that's our focus everybody has different parts to play but you know, starting as a podcast, then growing to a media company, understanding that, you know, there's different messages that need to be put out there. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it's a way to impact the world through providing information, through giving people a voice, through uplifting. And uh, I feel like, you know, media is one of the most important things that there is in the world. Like you said, that, you know, you can really shape the hearts and the minds of people. Through- you can decide the algorithm. Mm-hmm. Like, once when, when you get the ability to to decide what's cool and what's acceptable, that's different. Because it's like now you can't say certain things in media because you know the gatekeepers of media not going to reward you for that, essentially, right? They're going to shut you off. And then it's like I'm talking to, you know, some folks that control a lot of media, and they were saying basically, you know, we can't put too much intelligence on our platform because we're going to lose our audience. You know, we going for the lowest common denominator. We got to connect with people right there at that level of ignorance and then try to sneak a little candy in the medicine jar. But it's like, they like, Keith, sometimes you too high level. And I'm like, number one, I don't think it's true because I reach the streets. I just think that you've never gave enough time to actually, you know, uh, uh, be in my shoes and spend time with the type of communication I have with the people. Because I've been in all hoods throughout America teaching, all throughout the world, and I have impact and effect. But I think what it is, is we get so comfortable with the way we do it. We really don't want to, you know, uh, um, give any, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's just the fact that when you used to nigga shit, and I'm going to use that because as Sister Soldier say, nigga is a person of any people that is ignorant and not, and don't have the ability or willingness to grow. You understand me? So I don't use that in context to our culture. I use it in context to a mindset. You understand me? And a character. But it's like, the way I see it is that it's impossible for us to get to the place that we need to in the time frame that we need to if we only taking baby steps. The conversations have to go high level. You understand me? You can meet people in the streets and you can wrap them up with a little bit of motivation, give them a little bit of game and things of that nature. But when we talk about what the change in that community going to be 10, 20, 30 years, that's not going to change that community. That's not going to get them some wealth, some power, and change generations from there, right? We know that the context, you got to strip people of their environment, give them a new culture, an identity, a new belief system, literally, in order for you to really see some change because we need soldiers out here where it's like, bro, it's what you need to do. Listen, but... We, we getting so far away from that and we're trying to entertain ourselves into success. We're trying to entertain ourselves into wealth. That's not going to happen. Ain't no people ever entertain them, themselves into liberation. It's not going to happen. Mm. We go feel good about our legacies as we working with the attentions to produce some sort of change. But when we look at the reality of the next generation, they going to be faced with the fact that we didn't do enough or we didn't do it the right way. And each generation is going to be fighting worse because the next generation is used to those same tactics and tricks. Either you got to automate the system for everybody or you got to separate yourself from those who are not ready to go to that next level. Because if it, with, with organizations, one of the biggest issues is the initiate phase. The initiate phase, when I first get you in here, you understand me, get you cleaned up, teach you the language of what's going on in here. And what happens is people stay stuck at that level because it's like you're always trying to bring in new people rather than 
taking that level and going to the next one, it's like, oh, brother, all right, listen, we ain't got time to be stuck with the introduction of this. We now got to go to that next level. Mm -hmm. We can't be talking about LLCs no more. Look, the information is out there. I automated the process. You go through it. You figure it out out of all, whatever you need to do, get that done. Because now we over here trying to build estates. I'm seeing uh, uh, Chrissy Kardashian putting in churches and getting their tax write-offs and stuff. We, we got to move to different levels. You understand I me? Mean, we can't be operating at that low level. Because if a person can look at the trend of black American culture and be like, yo, at the rate and the way that they going about it, yeah, they still will never catch up. Like that'd be the reality. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Like y'all need billions and billions of dollars and you need a whole cultural spiritual shift for this to happen. So it's like with media, we get the ability to say, no, nah, you know what? It's not that cool to be smart yet still. You understand? It's not that cool to use big words. We still make fun of people for using big words. And of course, intelligence is break things down in simple models. But at the same time, we got to not be afraid of, you know, a uh, higher level conversations and yeah. higher level concepts. I think that's happening though, right? If you think about what we're, we're doing, right? It's like, you if we walk out in the streets, nobody has any idea. Like if they don't know us, they have no idea what we do, mm -hmm. right? They looking at us, the judgment is like, yo, they got hoodies on, they got J's on, or they got Pumas on, <laughs> right? They like, yo, who are these guys, right? Yeah. And then when they hear us speak or we tell them what we do, if they've actually been in tune with what we do, it's like, oh, wait, they made this cool. And all we did was take it from what we saw in, in hip hop. It was like, all right, when I listened to Nas when I was 10 years old, I knew his lyrics by heart, but I didn't know the understanding of mm -hmm. it. Shout out to Nas. Right? By 14, I'm starting to get a grasp on it. By the time I'm 20, now I can execute on some of the information. Yeah. It means more to me. I had time to digest it. I had time to mature. Now I can understand these things on my own. And so like right now, we in that phase where it's like, we're giving the information, right? People are grasping it very quickly, but what they're doing more than what we did with the, the music was they're executing a lot faster. And so that phase is happening a lot faster. So we're seeing that, and it's becoming the cool thing, right? When we go to places, people are telling us, like, yo, I just got my first piece of real estate. Like, we was in, in Hollywood, and it was like A-list actors. Like, yo, I got a truck fucking with y'all. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's happening. They're getting the information. They're executing a lot quicker. So it is going. it's, it's becoming cooler to be in this space, right? Because now it's like, all right, there's value in it. It's changing not just me, but it's changing all the people that I impact as well. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, you know, we a byproduct of that success, right? Yeah. You know, known literally for, you know, being thought leaders and teaching and educating people, you know, uh, through financial, for financial liberation. You understand me? I'm always trying to push the envelope because I want to see at what speed can we really go if we don't take for granted that we're being successful. You understand me? If we start thinking we're successful, we slow down a little bit. Mm -hmm. You understand mm -hmm. me? So I think it's dangerous to start counting your wins. You understand me? It's like you in a battle, you got a thousand battles to go, but you counting the last hundred. It's like, don't focus on that right now. Yeah. You got a thousand to That's go key. through. That's key. You understand me? Because you 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 might burn out after the next four hundred. Yeah. You understand me? That's, but and that's that's the common theme. They see us and they like, and y'all never stop. Yeah. They're like yo, why? Remember what y'all just did last week? Like why aren't y'all celebrating that? And it's like, nah, I had down because the purpose is much bigger. The vision is is much bigger. The pursuit of what we know can happen is way bigger than us to say, all right, well that was great. South by Southwest was amazing. Yeah, we should applaud that. Nah, man, we got a vision for 2023 that yeah. we still got to execute. This thing's a 2022 that we got to get done. Yeah, I mean, because, shoot, you ain't, I don't think we go get no greater speeches than what our ancestors have laid out. You know, Martin Luther King gave some amazing wealth speeches. Malcolm X gave some amazing. Honorable Mr. Farquhar brought two million black men together. You know, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was teaching in con different countries and sending people all over and creating... And he had, you know, I remember that it was one video, Saver's Day, the brother was talking about the $50 million revenue that they did this year. You understand me? With trust and buildings and, you know, uh, uh, they had the plane, the import, the export, the schools, the newspapers, all of these different things. So it's like, with me personally, I think what it is is I've experienced black men with power and wealth already, and then I've seen it fall. Mm -hmm. So longevity is what I'm impressed with and unity is what I'm impressed with because those are the two things I haven't seen. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Unity is the one thing that I haven't seen and I'm talking about unification long term to where there's no reason, there's no reason at all we can't huddle together and produce a billion dollars. There's no reason, especially with what's out there right now. You understand me? If, if, if we can watch as a culture, us, we can watch as a culture 
guys who were unknown, you understand me, who had no money at first, get into blockchain spaces and make a billion dollars, and we pour our collective influence, money, and power into it, how does that not signal to us opportunity, work together, let's build? A person may say, you know what? That might be a lot for me to do by myself. But if I start measuring, well, these brothers got collective influence, resources, you understand me, intellect. This brother has his over here. He got one over there. If we form Voltron, because if I look at the monopoly that corporations have on it, Apple, you understand me, one point some trillion dollars, they got more money than the collective 45 million black people in America. It's gonna be very tough. You understand me? So I look at those as the top as our competition. I'm not sure what everybody look at the competition, mm -hmm. but they like running the world. Do we want to live in a world where our grandchildren, great, great, great grandchildren are forever uh, uh, under corporations because one or two men came together and had a collaboration? Or do we want to have some control in the world as well? So it's like, it's the level where we celebrate as we go because you definitely want to have gratitude for your success. Mm -hmm. But then you have to remember the depth of the issue and the problem that we face, but also the beauty of the new technology resources and tools that we have. It wasn't a time before where there's this many black men and women with media platforms mm -hmm. that can reach millions of people. That is billions of dollars already. It's just, there's never been a round circle to be like, yo, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? We speaking in tongues. Let's do this, do this, that, and the third. Yeah. And then boom, all of a sudden, the trajectory is pointing to one collective energy. And then we make we take that billion, because it ain't about just making the billion, it's about what we do with it. Because I haven't seen dangerous money yet. Not from our culture, I haven't seen dangerous money yet. Because you know, imagine a billionaire from your neighborhood. The next time you walk through that neighborhood, it looks like the future. You understand me? It's beautified. They own everything in that neighborhood. You talking about future hubs, resources, no more food deserts. I mean, like you can change. And, and don't get me wrong. It's like, okay, a billion dollars is enough for you to stick to something if you got a dangerous mind and implement that 100%. So it's like, if you get a billion and then you waiting for two billion, no, I need five billion, no, I need 10, you go forever try to stack money before you really get started on doing something. Mm -hmm. So it has to be built into the gradual stages. Cause if we can do this at this level, I don't know if y'all got a hundred million, but I ain't got a hundred million. <laughs> if we can do this at this stage, <laughs> what is the possibility if we properly fund it? Yeah, yeah. that's a fact. That's, that's because if we, we are the living examples of no excuses. True. If you have more resources than us and we doing more than you, what's your excuse? It has to be that either your mind or your heart ain't in it. That just ain't your passion. So if it, but if you say you for the culture, you for the people, for the diaspora, put the resources behind us then. Let us let us get to the goal then. That might not be yours. You mm -hmm. understand me? We might, you know what I'm saying? Let me let me talk to a Kanye and a Robert Smith and we we have different plans that can go because it gotta be the older generation and the young generation working together. We not enemies, old men for counsel, young men for war. That's how it goes. Mm. We're gonna have creative ideas. They gonna be rigid in ways to where they have wisdom that we ain't gonna be able to see certain things. And we have to be open enough to take that guidance and they have to be open enough to listen to these new creative ways in which we can go into new industries. And it'd be like, yeah, you can put a hundred million dollars into these HBCUs, Okay, but then also, what happened if you put $100 million into these independent programs that we can run across the nation? We can start creating change absolutely right now. We can teach these models of stocks and crypto and Forex and automate machines and a whole bunch of other different things, and we can start turning out results ASAP. We can challenge every institution of power. I know, you know I'm going to talk that big talk, but at the end of the day, that's my ultimate goal. It's like... A person may be like, all right, Keys, why don't you do this, that, and the third? You got to be patient. Let me get to that point where I can fully fund the thoughts and ideas and I'll do it. Because it's not, I'm not trying to do it to look good in front of the people. Where they be like, oh, I like what Key's doing. I done felt that energy before and I don't mean nothing. You understand? Because at the end of the day, for whatever reason, you know, I was given this mind where I'm always looking at the higher, the bigger picture. I can never be satisfied with the smaller picture. And I don't know why. Even when I was analyzing the Will Smith situation. Yeah, I wonder, I like slapping people up too, but I'm always looking at the bigger picture. You understand me? After, after we done with the slap and the hand goes back and I'm sitting in the seat and I'm thinking like, it's what we do with our platforms. This is what we do when we get on them stages. Yeah. This the messages, you understand me? This, this is the height of our power. This is the height of our caste system 
or when we get millions of dollars, we talking about each other and we 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 gotta you know assault each other on TV. That's the height of culture. That's what we celebrate the next day. That can't be it for me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That ain't high level. That's low level to me. You feel me? And so protection is not something you do afterwards. That's revenge. So protection is what you do before. So if we want to protect the culture, then we have to set up institutions right now so we not going to generations to come and trying to get revenge on the things that happen because we ain't set up enough things for them to have success and power. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's powerful. I mean, that's interesting, that the protection thing, because that was one of the things that was brought up. And in my mind, I'm like, if protecting my family at all costs and protecting my women at all costs, I can't jeopardize myself. Uh, here's kinda, the thing. It's, it's kind of productive. It's more so about there's a guilt that people carry when you know you're not protecting your family. And so you got to get revenge because you were living your life in a way. Like, for a man to protect his family, you got to, for, for him to really protect his family, you got to have love out there respect or be feared you understand me because that's going to be the reflection that he grants that shields his family as well mm -hmm. his wife is loved because he loves so somebody gonna protect her they, she out there nobody gonna do nothing stupid or he respect it so I ain't, I ain't gonna talk about this man you understand me or he feared like it's repercussions that come behind if i do this but if you're not setting up that character that persona for yourself that legacy and and and, and the way that you move then they out there unprotected. They could be harmed at any point in time. Then when something happens, you got to do something stupid to go get revenge. So protection is not what happens before. You setting them up not to be touched before. Mm -hmm. Like if our black women are getting disrespected, you understand me, uh, all over the world, it's because it, it's something that we haven't done yet to where the rest of the world don't fear, love, or respect us enough to not treat our women in that quality or condition. You understand me? So... That's my point of it. And at the same time, the core of American culture, there's nothing more normalized than violence against black men in every aspect of culture, media, TV, music, streets, like from slavery to prison to police. There's nothing more embedded in American culture at the beginning of it till now than violence against black men. Mm -hmm. So I'm just not impressed by it. That's just my take on it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I know that's definitely something that, you know. That's the high level take. Not a level positive. I like seeing a slap too. It's not <laughs> a positive. Definitely not a positive. I don't think anybody, you know, is impressed by it. Um, But, you know. It's, it's a lot of ignorance that's impressed by it. People like. It's entertainment. It's entertaining. You it, know? I think it shows how much we not protecting our women because our women actually was happy about that. You know what I mean? Because I look at things from like, yo, we all like a reflection of each other in a certain aspect. So it's like. It, 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 you know, the fact that his woman or, you know, if it never happened, I'm more impressed by his woman never being disrespected. You understand me? Rather than you have to set it up. Because I think the bigger thing is he played that beautiful role, Richard. Beautiful role. Mm -hmm. You understand me? I think that's a great movie because King Richard was an example of having your father in your life. You understand me? A black father in your life. Yeah. And I don't think that role was celebrated enough in courtship. You understand me? Like that was an image where I didn't see them put nothing weird in that movie. Everything was like they showed a beautiful image of a black father being in his life, instilling confidence, love, energy, intelligence, protecting his children before something happened. Like he checking the media before harm comes to them, before they get to them in that light of when he was staring and they was connected to him. Mm -hmm. And I think if I'm to psychoanalyze, you understand me? Now, Will, don't try to know me. You know what I'm saying? If I'm psychoanalyzing <laughs> it, I think you know when you play a role, you become you become it, right? Yeah. And when you when you playing a black father who is really protecting his family, you take on that energy. But then you also may have to look at the persona you had to leave behind to play a black father that's protecting their family. Because he may have felt like, damn, I left my family to the wolves of the industry. I let them be disrespected. You understand me? Become all these other different things. And here's a father who was intentionally guiding them and thinking ahead of the time to make sure that the industry don't tear them up. That was the energy that he was trying to put over his family, his children. In every instance where, oh, this person said that, nah, we checking that right there. Oh, we checking that, we checking that. And at the at the behest of being seen like the villain. Mm. You understand me? Like, even if they don't like me, guess what? I'm protecting my family before something happens. Yeah. So I don't have to go get revenge later. And I think- That's interesting. He had to cycle, I, I, from my perspective. Yeah, because if you think about the history of like, and not to disrespect him or his family, but like 
when Willow became an artist, mm -hmm. she quit yeah. because of the imagery and how she, how it was, she was being perceived. And it was on him to be like, all right, well, this is she's gonna have the freedom to create. Same thing with his son. It was mm -hmm. like, at a certain point, he was going through like he's wearing dresses and it's yeah. like, let him be free, let him be free. So now the world is open to attack. So that's an interesting interesting perspective that you take. Yeah. I mean, that's the that's that's where my mind goes to when yeah. I start thinking about things. And so I think that we just have to, you know, we gotta do better, number one, at forming families. And you have to understand that the industry is not normal. You know what I'm saying? Hollywood is not normal. Yeah. That's not a family setting. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what you think is freedom in the industry, you actually become a slave to those perspectives that's telling you to break away from what you really believe about your core and yourself. You understand me? And they say, no, you ain't got to do this. You can do this, that, and the third. And then anybody outside of that, they seen as the enemy. Oh, are you trying to get me to conform to this, that, and the No, they got you to conform to this. And I'm trying to, I'm, you know, I had a conversation with Lakeith about this, Lakeith Stanfield, and I'm like, I'm not, listen, brother, I'm only asking you basically is, is what you doing connected to who you were before you got in the industry? That's it. You understand me? It's who you become. Cause I had a long conversation with him before in Oakland around my shop. And we had a conversation about black man, in the industry, the whole nine. So I know the brother intelligent and got consciousness. So, but you know, anytime you bring up anything, people get triggered. You feel me? But it's like, I'm not suggesting anything to you. I'm asking you. Is what you protected and what you projected now, is that who you were before? Is that still protected? Or did you become what the industry has made you? You understand me? And now everybody else who's connected to those core principles that you represented, they seem like the enemy because they trying to bring you back to yourself. You understand me? And so I'm not here to change nobody. I just try to get people to think. That's it. This episode is brought to you by Gold Water. You know, we here. Um... And I want to make sure I gift it, y'all. Y'all gonna be get the first signed copies it is. of my book, Paradigm Keys. You understand me? Uh, to some of my favorite revolutionaries. That gotta go on the show. Now that lives on the bookshelf. You understand me? Very important. Assets over liabilities. Volume one. Make sure y'all don't try to steal that as trademarked and license over. <laughs> <laughs> I heard please, they said. Please let them know. <laughs> Yes, sir. Dear God, you know what I'm talking about? Let me get you that. Listen, I think everybody should write a book. You understand me? Uh, it's a way to immortalize yourself. There's a customer born every day for your book. You know what I mean? You never get a supply of customers. In endless. Good or bad. Publicity will help your book sell. There is no ending, just another beginning. Come on, talk to me then. Talk to me then. High level conversations. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm planning on having a, a lot more that come out as well. Very important. It is. You can't be a thought leader without literature. First person I've ever seen that do somebody else's signature. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, this is High Level Conversations, 19 Keys, the greatest thought leader of our time. Yeah, tap in. I'm 19 Keys, and this is High Level Conversations. Tap in with the guy. breakdown of your philosophy of why you don't particularly believe in the immune system when you're talking about the function of all these things working. Okay, so you're talking about immune system when you're talking about immunity, and then they say that what makes up the immune system is the T cells. The T cells is actually the thymus cells. They talk about the B cells, that's the bone marrow cells. They talk about the uh, macrophages, that's inside of something called lymph nodes. You know, they're talking about the phagocytes that's produced by the white blood cells that goes to the army school that we call the thymus gland to get their actual military position. You see that? So they talk about uh, neutrophils, basophils, monophils. So when you look up 
what they call the immune system is nothing but the lymphatic system. Because last time I checked, everything that they say make up the lymphatic system, I mean, uh, the, the immune system is a lymphatic associated organ. So where is the immune system then? And what do that really mean? Well, See, well, my interpretation was that it's just talking about the system, these things working together, and that when one or these two things are off, then that's when the system itself is broken down, rather than one central thing being the key to keeping you safe or not getting sick. Right, so I agree with that, right? So now we got to get into wordplay then, because they will take the immune system and then feed you their Greek philosophy to keep you away from how to truly heal the system of the body, which is the lymphatic system. So when I say I don't believe in the immune system, uh, in the way you just put it, I believe in that in that degree. Oh, you don't but, believe in their interpretation? But they, in the they way. interpretation okay, I it. of yeah. it is totally off. So I rather not even use the word because it keeps you distracted from the big system that cleans the body anyway, which is the great lymphatic system. Yes, sir. Because they got you thinking that you you got immunity from something. No, it's cause and effect. What you put inside of your body for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. They got you thinking that you can take a certain pill and it'll combat your body against this and that. No, this is a lifestyle change. See, immunity comes between lifestyle change. So you have people studying up on immunity and doing things to build their immune system, but they're not changing their life. This episode is brought to you by Goldwater.